A special drug awareness assembly was held at Washington Academic Middle School in Sanger today. We have special guests Jim Horton and Hollywood actor Adam James in the studio. I'm Emma Ott with all that and more tonight at 8. Get ready for yet another strike, this time at Fresno State. I'm Valentina Saldana and I'll have that story next at 8. The Fresno Veterans Day Parade is coming right up and this year's parade route has a change. I'm Sheila Gaitan with those details. Plus, we are previewing free breakfast for vets tomorrow. Also tonight, this massive fire breaks out overnight in the community of Pinedale. We'll have that story and many others coming up next in prime time. New, local, unique. My TV 53 News at 8 starts right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the San Joaquin Valley's only 8 p.m. news. I'm Austin Reed. It is the middle of the week now, Wednesday, November the 8th. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Well, our big story tonight is in Sanger, where a local nonprofit teamed up with a big-time martial arts instructor and Hollywood actor to break the stigma of addiction while also having fun. It's a unique idea, and it's a story you'll see only on My TV 53. Emma Ott joins us from the News Center with the full story. Hi, Austin. We have a super cool story today. Washington Academic Middle School in Sanger held a drug awareness assembly hosted by the Zachary Horton Foundation. Zachary Horton Foundation is a local nonprofit dedicated to breaking the stigma against drug addiction. We've had the founder, Jim Horton, on the show multiple times, and we have had him back today to touch on why starting this conversation with children now is so important. Earlier today, Adam and I were at Washington Academic Middle School in Sanger, also known as WAMS, and we had the privilege, they were so kind to invite us out. Uh, we got to do their entire school, seventh and eighth grade, over 1,600 students that were there, and we mixed a combination of Adam sharing uh, his love of martial arts and uh, a, a lot of the energy that goes behind that. Jim decided to team up with Hollywood actor and renowned martial arts expert Adam James to make it not only a special but memorable experience for the kids. The assembly began with an intro into Jim's foundation while he educated students about the topic of drug use. Jim lost his son to an accidental fentanyl overdose at just 19 years old in 2020. He now makes it his mission to tell his story to society in hopes that what happened to him doesn't happen to anyone else. We all know how hard it can be to keep the attention of children, which is why the foundation teamed up with Adam James for an unforgettable experience. As you can see from the footage, the crowd went wild when Adam came out to perform some of his moves in front of the school. And so tell me, how does that bleed into martial arts? It's a great question. I've always felt that they go hand in hand. A lot of great oh. martial artists have been actors. Um, one of my dear friends and mentor was Leo Fong, who was okay. Bruce Lee's close friend and training partner. Very cool. He also previewed his new limited series, Doc Savage, The Man of Copper, which will be featured at this year's Comic Con in Bakersfield on November 19th. The moral of the story here is to start the conversation about drugs young while also making it a fun experience for the kids. Knowledge and awareness are key to the fight against drug addiction, and every child has the potential to make a positive impact on their community. I'm Emma Ott with My TV 53 and News at 8. What a great idea. Emma, thank you for that. New tonight from the Singer Police Department this evening, officers have a parental awareness alert. In light of a recent incident, they want to emphasize the critical importance of monitoring your children's online activity. Last weekend, Sanger PD responded to a house party that had been widely promoted on social media, drawing over 90 attendees, including many underage individuals. This situation underscores the need for parents to be vigilant, according to police. Furthermore, if you become aware of a party being promoted on social media, you are asked to reach out to the Sanger Police Department via phone or social media to let them know these types of parties can be dangerous and more often often than not illegal. We are once again on strike patrol. Today, Fresno State sent out a letter to students and staff regarding a one-day planned strike for this coming Tuesday, November the 14th. Reporter Valentina Saldana is following the latest developments. Valentina? 
Teamsters Local 2010, the union representing skilled trade employees at the California State University, has announced a one-day strike for next Tuesday across the entire CSU system. This was the scene yesterday in Sacramento. <laughs> According to Fresno State, in the event that there is indeed strike activity at Fresno State, the campus will remain open and student services will continue. The school says if you live in the residence hall, your access will remain uninterrupted. The student union, library, and other student services will also remain open, but most likely, there will be picket lines at the entrance to the campus. Students will be able to cross the picket line to enter the campus. Officials also say students are not obligated to provide the members of the picket line with your name or any other information. The university also says they remain committed to providing students with the highest quality of educational experience. As a California State University system, they are hoping to come to an agreement with the Teamsters Union before Tuesday. Professors are asking for better wages and smaller class sizes to name a few of the things they want changed. In the newsroom tonight, Valentina Saldana, My TV 53 News at 8. Okay, Valentina, do stay with My TV 53 News at 8 for continuing coverage of the possible strike. New tonight from the Fresno Fire Department. Check this out. Overnight, Fresno firefighters responded to this structure fire on Beechwood Avenue in the Pinedale community. The fire at apartments which were under construction destroyed two buildings. The cause of this blaze is now under investigation. Luckily, nobody was inside because the buildings were being remodeled. No one was hurt. Well, this just in from Fresno PD. Attention Kia and Hyundai owners, you can now get a free steering wheel lock at any of the five policing stations. Here's a list of where you can pick up the locks. In Southwest, go to 1211 Fresno Street, Southeast, 224 South Argyle Street. In Northeast, check out 1450 East Teague Avenue. Northwest residents, check out 3080 West Shaw Avenue. And for Central residents, just go to 3502 North Blackstone Avenue. Hours will be Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., but the department does say this will be a limited supply, so first come, first served. We have a couple brand new traffic alerts for drivers in Fresno. First up, starting Friday, November 10th, North Avenue from Maple to Cedar Avenues will close to traffic for emergency sewer main repair. The closure will last through next Friday, the 17th, pending any unforeseen delays. Drivers on North Avenue will detour at Chestnut and Orange Avenues all the way to Jensen. Second alert is from Monday, November 13th through Wednesday the 15th. BNSF Railroad will close the Tulare and Q Street crossing for track repairs. Traffic will detour all the way to Ventura Avenue and Fresno Street during this closure. Access to Santa Fe Avenue for Amtrak and Greyhound services will remain through the detour routes. To the South Valley, we're new tonight from the Tulare County Sheriff's Office. Two juveniles have been arrested for vandalizing a Goshen church. Just before noon today, deputies responded to a report of vandalism at Mount Zion Church. That's on the 1772 100 block of Avenue 308 in Goshen. When deputies arrived, they discovered that suspects had broken multiple windows, causing more than a thousand bucks of damage. Through the investigation, deputies were able to identify the two male juvenile suspects responsible for the crime and ultimately arrested them by 1.30 this afternoon at nearby Ridgeview Middle School in Visalia. Today in our nation's capital, Central Valley Congressman Jim Costa spoke to Congress regarding democratic countries like Israel, Ukraine, and Armenia, whom he says are under severe attack from terrorists and authoritarian regimes. We are at a seminal moment, I believe, in world history, comparable to times in the 20th century, like the Depression and World War II in the 1960s. In other political news, Ivanka Trump was in court earlier Wednesday. CNN says this was the highly anticipated conclusion to an unprecedented eight days of witness testimony that included Donald Trump and three of his adult children in the civil fraud trial brought by the New York Attorney General's office. 
The AG's office rested its case after hearing from the eldest Trump daughter, who was pressed about her role in securing loans for the Trump Organization and a penthouse apartment that she leased from her father. And finally, in your first few minutes of nonstop news at eight, Veterans Day is just a few days away now. And as reporter Shayla Gatton tells us, veterans in the Valley are already being thanked. Shayla also has an update on a new parade route this year for Fresno. Well, Austin, this year's Veteran Day falls on a Saturday, so we are just a few days away from the ever important holiday. But new this year, the Fresno Veterans Day parade route has a change. From P Street, it will travel west on Fresno Street to Fulton, where it will make a southbound turn. It will continue on Fulton to Inyo Street, where it will turn west, ending at 8th Street. It will still begin in front of Fresno City Hall. And happening tomorrow in honor of Veterans Day, the Fresno VA Hospital says they are excited to share some special offerings from the Veterans Canteen Service. Join them on Thursday, November 9th for a free breakfast at the canteen between 7 and 10 a.m. You can also drop by the Starbucks at Patriot Brew to enjoy a free brewed coffee between 6 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Officials also say the VCS locations will be closed on Friday, November 10th in observance of the holiday. This comes as the VA Central California Healthcare System hosted its fall flag changing ceremony on Sunday at the Avenue of Flags near the hospital entrance. It was also an opportunity to show local youth the proper procedures for changing and retiring flags and to teach them about the meaning of Veterans Day in a manner suitable for their age. Local Boy Scouts and other youth organizations took part in the day's activity. Congressman Jim Costa also joined in to share heartfelt words of reverence for our veterans and extend his gratitude to the young participants to make this event possible. And by the way, in Porterville, the annual Veterans Day Run and Walk will both be held this Saturday, November 11th on East Thurman Avenue. Reporting for My TV 53 News at 8, I'm Sheila Gaitan. Austin, back to you. Shayla, thanks for that. That does it for your first few minutes of nonstop news at eight, but don't go anywhere. We are just getting started. Still ahead, the Kern County Sheriff's Office is warning the public about a phone scam targeting individuals from down south. Plus, after a century long absence, gray wolves have returned to California. And we're gonna head to Tulare County for that story. And our cold weather will continue with more chances for snow in the mountains and even rain coming this weekend for the valleys. We'll have an update at your midweek weather forecast. New, local, unique. This is my TV 53 News at 8, and we are back in a little over two minutes. This is my TV 53 news. New local unique with Austin Reed. You're watching My TV 53 News at 8. Hey, thanks so much for staying with us. Now to our big stories in Kern County for our viewers watching on KNXT. A quick reminder, the Stockdale Highway Pavement Rehab Project will lead to many closures between New Stein Road and Gosford Road, November 11th and 12th. Construction is scheduled to begin at 5 a.m. on Saturday, November 11th, as crews place rubberized hot mix asphalt on Stockdale Highway between New Stein and Ash Roads. Work is expected to be complete by 6 p.m. the same day. The intersection of Stockdale and New Stein Road will then be closed on the following day from 6 to 10 a.m. New tonight from the Kern County Sheriff's Office, they are warning the public about a phone scam targeting individuals across the county. At this time, they say they are still receiving reports that residents are getting phone calls from someone claiming to be Sergeant Newell and is either asking for payment for missing jury duty or for info regarding a case. The caller is asking for electronic payment. This is a scam. Kern County Sheriff's Office will never ask for payment.
Now, they are also receiving new reports about a Sergeant Edward O'Brien of the Kern County Sheriff's Office with claims of failure to appear in federal court and asking for a meeting in person to verify signatures. This is also a scam. Well, new tonight from the Clovis Unified School District. Tonight, we are learning more about the exciting educational center under construction in the district's southeast quadrant. The Terry P. Bradley Educational Center will be housing the future Clovis South High School and yet to be named Intermediate School. Here's more info. On October 17th, Clovis Unified School District officially broke ground on the Terry P. Bradley Educational Center, the new educational complex in Southeast Clovis. This has been 14 years in the making since um, the governing board named that the next educational center, this piece of property we're on would be named Terry P. Bradley Educational Center. And it's just so fitting for as much work as Dr. Bradley did for us around facilities and our funding models, just to bring all of, a lot of our schools and our modernization projects to life. And so it just is a great moment to get to honor him. And I'm so excited. Today it has been a momentous occasion, I think, in our district and what it means to me is it's the journey that we now get to take to serve our students in the southern southeastern most portion of our district and how exciting it is to grow and be able to serve as many students as possible in our community and the day represents kind of the marker points of that and being able to emulate what dr bradley has stood for his entire career is a hugely humbling and an honor to be able to do. Well, you know, it's not its not just me. It's the thousands of people that work for Clovis Unified. They just named the facility you know, after myself, but it's really everyone who made, made this day possible. You know, we're going to build the great facilities, but it's the people who are here each and every day of the school year that are going to make a difference in the lives of kids. So the vision and the hope for the space is that it is cutting edge, competitive, and cohesive as an educational space to serve the students that will be feeding into this area. And I think Dr. Bradley set a firm foundation with his stewardship, his attention to detail, and his ability to think about all of the players in our community, from students to parents to employees, everybody coming together to create a new opportunity that may not happen anywhere else in our district. So that's where the cutting edge piece comes in. My TV 53 News continues with the Valley's local forecast. Everybody is Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> Your mind becomes fast as lightning. Although the future is a little bit frightening. Little bit frightening. The light that you're riding. The light that you're riding. You're a diamond in the rough. A brilliant ball of pain. Follow MyTV53 on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube right now for continuing coverage. Hey, welcome back, everybody. All new tonight, the Cherokee Nation's first female principal chief is being honored with her own Barbie doll. The Wilma Mankiller doll is part of the Barbie Inspiring Women series and is now available for purchase. Mankiller served as the principal chief from 1985 to 95 and revitalized the Cherokee Nation's tribal government and advanced relentlessly for improved health care and housing services. In addition to the doll's release, Barbie is donating $25,000 to the American Indian Resources Center. Now to a special report. After a century-long absence, gray wolves have returned to our state's forests. Though some experts are thrilled to see their return, some farmers and ranchers worry the wolves pose a threat to their animals. From Tulare County, our partners at Voice of America, Robin Guess, has the full story. That is the howl, and this is the face 
of one of California's top predators. The endangered gray wolf's return to California after a hundred years astonishes wildlife biologists. The newest pack is in Tulare County in the south, where scientists must scramble to place tracking collars on them. With collars, we have more information. With more information, we can make decisions that are good for the wolves and right for our people. Scientists estimate 50 gray wolves living in six packs call California home. Tracking and tests reveal that rather than being reintroduced to California, these animals migrated naturally from hundreds of miles away. DNA links them to the wolves in Yellowstone National Park. These are the only two known photos of the elusive new Tulare pack. These tracks and this scat are more evidence of the pack, numbering six wolves. But after four weeks, biologists failed to collar one. I don't think failure should always be viewed as a 100% negative word. When you fail, you often can learn a lot. They call this the land of the giants. It is home to ancient giant sequoias like this one. It is also where the Tulare County Wolf Pack has decided to call home. Here, they have hundreds of thousands of acres where they can roam, they can hunt, and they can breed. And they can also stay far away from ranchers, livestock, and of course, people. Robin Guest, VOA News, Tulare County, California. And we'll have a final word for you right after this. Well, our partners at Stewell News alerted us about this next story, which it's our final one tonight. It's a good one. Two orphaned bear cubs at San Diego Humane Society's Ramona Wildlife Center can't get enough of a gigantic pumpkin. The pumpkin was donated to them this week. For more than 24 hours now, the cubs have been exploring, playing with, sitting atop, and munching on the giant fruit. It's 467 pounds. It was donated and delivered by a local couple down south. They set out to grow a monster pumpkin during the pandemic and succeeded this year. Once the pumpkin stopped growing in September, they wanted it to have a greater purpose. The couple delivered it to the Wildlife Center this past Sunday. So now the pumpkin is providing incredible fall themed enrichment for the two bear cubs who have been in care at the Wildlife Center since July after they were found next to their deceased mother in the San Bernardino Mountains. And that is a massive, massive pumpkin. All right, let's get a final look at your forecast. We are getting closer to the weekend. This weekend, it's Veterans Day weekend. Do expect more snow in the mountains over the next few hours and really into the rest of this week. For the valley, we'll be staying cool with cool highs and cool overnight lows. That story will continue. As always, we appreciate you tuning to my TV 53 News at 8. I'm Austin Reed, hoping your news is good news. We'll be back tomorrow. Hope you are as well. Bye-bye.